Hello and welcome to the preview show from Rams TV. It's another crucial day in the League One, the promotion race. And for Derby County, it's Derby Day. Sort of, anyway. Yeah, Derby hosts their closest rivals, geographically speaking, in the EFL this afternoon. More on Burton Albion a little later. First, though, this is how things stand with just three weekends of the season remaining. Plymouth are top, Ipswich are second, and with the game in hand on third place Sheffield Wednesday, surely the top two have to be the favourites to go up automatically now. The playoff race is even tighter with Peterborough, Bolton and Derby fighting for just two remaining top six spots. Bolton's game in hand could prove to be crucial there. Well, Burton still have an outside chance of a top half finish. Remarkable, really, given where they were uh, in the bottom four at Christmas. No one can be relegated this weekend, but time is running out for Accrington and Morecambe in particular. Uh, Forest Green are already down. So another big afternoon coming up here at Pride Park Stadium. Derby back home after a couple of hard-fought results on the road over the last week. We've been reflecting on the draw with Bristol Rovers and the victory at Exeter on Tuesday with club captain Curtis Davis. Getting through the game Saturday, 95 minutes of the game, holding on to that lead and then um, obviously a penalty given against us, which we believe was harsh. Um, kind of took the sting out of it and, and almost it almost felt like a bit of a loss um, so going into the Exeter game it was even more important to make sure we got three points um, and we managed to do so I think it was a performance in which we didn't really looked in danger um, we I wouldn't, I wouldn't say we had a lot of the ball but we were always in control I think and um, and when we had the, the chances we took them I think um, Didzi obviously I say took them his first goal was was magic, um, and then the second one was was similar to the to the Bristol one, in which you know when I was watching from the sideline against Bristol, I knew as soon as he has a touch, it's game over because he's the most composed man and and such a good finisher. And uh, to go two 0 up, unfortunately, obviously to not keep the clean sheet was frustrating, and it gives them that little bit of hope going into the last eight minutes or whatever. So it was, um, but again because of the way they played, they didn't necessarily bombard us. They kept doing what they did, fair play to them, kept trying to play football. And, uh, and we hold on for the win. But, you know, we would have wanted six points, but I think if you asked us in isolation, in our, in our current form that we'd been in, if we would have taken four points from the two games, we'd probably say yes. Um, but I think the big thing is that we've won the last game, so can we bounce into these two home games and, and get in that winning feeling? You mentioned David McGoldrick. He's having a terrific season, 21 league goals at 35. You've played with some amazing players. Is he up there on, on, on the list? Yeah, definitely. In terms of... His, his ability alone is up there, but his, his impact on the team and how important he is to the team, he'd be right up there. Um, I knew all along he was way too good for this level. I'm not, not being disrespectful to the level, but he's too good for this level. Um, we're fortunate that he lives close to Derby and wanted to sign for a club close to home. So that's why we're lucky to have him. Um, but yeah, he, I, I've, I've run out of superlatives to say about him because he's magic, that's what I call him. Magic did he. Um, he can do anything with the ball, his touch, his vision, his awareness. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a special player and, and he's a good person. So that's the thing. It, it helps when you've got a good player, but when you've got a person that actually is part of the team, part of the team unity and part of the group, um, he brings a lot more than just his ability on the pitch. I was going to ask you about sort of his impact in the dressing room because sometimes you have these incredibly gifted maverick players as a, 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 to use the description that the managers used and and they maybe don't fit into the group but everything we hear is that no he is right at the heart of that room he is it's it's not not necessarily just because of his experienced head and and things he's done he's just he's a good guy he's a funny guy he's he's in with the banter he's in with everything so i think he's um he's a person that people warm to he's um you know he's, he's a family man he's he's got kids and everything like that so he can get in there with the older ones he's he's still in there with the younger ones he still likes his clothes still likes <laughs> to enjoy his life and stuff like that so um i think um he's he's just a good rounded person and and i think that's why people gravitate towards him 
three games to go, starting with, with Burton on, on Saturday. To some section of the, of the fan base, this will be one of the most important games of the season, the local derby. I know some people don't see it that way. Does this game need any extra stakes, though, with, with what's you know at stake in terms of the playoff run? No, I think it was we could have been playing anyone in this game. It's about winning the game. We have to do what we can do. Um, we're currently out of the position, the playoff positions um, on goal difference, and it's not in our hands. So we have to go and win every game and that's the only way we can look at it. Obviously, Burton have picked up form recently, so fair play to them. And actually, they're one of the, in, in terms of the two of us, they're, they're the form team going into this. Um, so they'll bring a decent crowd. We're, obviously, our crowd will turn up as they usually do. Um, but regardless of it being a, a local derby, it's about winning a game of football. And um, by hook or by crook, we need to get those three points and, and make sure we get over the line because ultimately, it's not time for bragging rights. It's just about getting the points to, to get us into the top six and then start pushing towards those playoffs. Curtis Davis there. Now there is plenty to connect Derby County and Burton Abbey and the clubs are just 12 and a half miles apart after all and they share a host of former managers and players. Even Burton's current captain John Brayford is a former Derby Player of the Year winner. But is this truly a local Derby? Burton boss Dino Marmaria certainly thinks so. Totally big game, uh, derby game. Uh, it's a game we're looking forward to. A game we're going to go there with full of confidence and belief. Uh, a big following. Um, you know, uh, the big club against the underdogs. It's uh, something that we're going to relish and, uh, and hopefully we're going to have a great day. I think our fans will have a great day regardless anyway. But I've got to make sure that I prepare the team to make sure that put in, put in a performance. Uh, that means a lot to us and the fans as well. And also, the, the results that we've had against the, the, the top teams of Sheffield Wednesday, again, Bolton. Yeah. Um, Derby will be perhaps a little bit wary of the fact that we're taking points off all the teams around them. No, because well, when we apply ourselves to the way we, we've been applying ourselves in terms of doing the basics well, in terms of showing that resilience, uh, that winning attitude, uh, playing on the front foot, if we show all those things, we'll pick up points against anybody. We never take that for granted. Uh, we've got to keep gr growing, keep learning all the time. Uh, our performances has not been perfect, uh, the results have been good, but our performance needs to be better and we're always working on that and the, behind the scenes to try and make sure that our performance needs to be better. We have to do a lot of learning from the previous away game, especially the Charlton, the latest one. Uh, we can't afford to have sloppy moments when you go away from home, especially at the start of the game. And, and I, think, I think the team is learning, the team is honest and I'm, uh, and I'm quite confident that the, the team is going to go there. Uh, Put in a real, real performance. And you look at the games that we've got left, but the possible session of, of Lincoln, um, we're going to have a big say in events at the top and bottom of the table, aren't we? And no, no team is going to look forward to playing Burton Albion in the situations they're in. Yeah, I always look at it one game at a time. I'm, I'm never, you know, uh, I, I stopped actually the players talking about, oh, look at our fixture list and all the rest of it because, because it's not, it, it doesn't change anything. The games are the games. Uh, all what we've got, we've got to focus is one game at a time. I, what I know is, I know we've got uh, a lot of work to do in terms of Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday, Sunday. I know the workload is going to be limited to prepare the players, but overall, when we take it one game at a time, the all tough games, no doubt about it. Uh, and 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 yeah, it's uh, we are ready, uh, we fit. Uh, and we're going to relish those this occasion. Uh, the league table look after itself at the end of the season. Uh, the league table normally is uh, is the fruit of what we've done throughout the season. So we'll be where we are. Those teams will be where they are, and uh, and we can't change that. We'll give Burton and Dino Marmaria their due. At the midway point of the season, plenty were predicting relegation for the Brewers. They were joint bottom when these sides last met in December and in the bottom four at the turn of the year. But they've been a top six side over the last 15 games, winning eight of them. They picked up more points than Derby in that spell. An influx of lone players in January certainly helped the likes of Zach Ashworth, Jasper Moon, Dale Taylor and Charlie Kirk have all played vital roles in dragging Burton to safety. They're a bit of a bogey side for Derby as well. But the Rams are right in the hunt for a playoff place after picking up four points away from home over the last week. Head coach Paul Warren watched his side come alive on Tuesday night to win at Exeter. Pleasing, obviously. The uh, two away games, you probably take four points, although I'm still raging it's not six. But um, 
I thought first half we just looked a bit nervy and you know said to him at half time and just play with a bit more energy a bit more purpose and you've got plenty and I thought we were much better second half the press was a lot more aggressive because um, we let him out once or twice on goal kicks first half which weren't great but the press was more aggressive I just thought everything we did we tried to play forward quickly and had a lot of good movement and created enough chances to win handsomely in the end. Obviously, they got that goal, which made the last uh, 15 minutes hugely unenjoyable. Um, but yeah, overall, pleased with the performance and really proud of the group. Like I, I'd, I'm trying to stick this answer in because it was in my head as I drove in. But like we haven't used the most amount, of, uh, the least amount of players in the league, I think, which is testament to the players. And I know I've got some outstanding players in the building, but in this league to play the amount of games that the senior pros have played is pretty impressive and that is credit to them as people and and credit to the, the whole medical team and fitness team trying to keep them all together because uh, I mean I hope I'm not tempting fate here but the fact that they've you know we've made you know like Connor Hoorahan, Didzy, Foz, Nat that we've tried to manage their minutes as best we can to get through the season and with three games to go we're still in with a really good chance of getting into the playoffs with a pretty fit squad is a testament to everyone here so we've been fortunate and, and I think uh, the second half display the amount of energy the lads have to put out there playing for me isn't easy I know but um, it's credit to them and they deserve their win so I'm really proud of them. Let me ask you a little bit more about David McGoldrick in, in particular 21 league goals he's on for the season now he's been your match winner in, in a lot of cases have you ever worked with a player like him before? Uh, no not really uh, I haven't, no. Um, he's a bit of a maverick. Uh, Hammy always says I hate mavericks. I mean, it's a bit harsh, but um, they're harder to... Uh, they're not harder to manage as people, they're harder to manage as players because 60-70% of what Didzy does is unstoppable, unplayable. 30% of what he does is frustrating because he gives the ball away. However, the, you need that part of him to do that. It's a yin and yang, isn't it? Without... You know, you could you could pick players who always go sideways and backwards and never give the ball away. But you know, you need the players who are going to take risks, and he's that player. And he's the when I first came in, when I spoke to him, I told him he was the diamond in the team, uh, and I need to keep him fit and I need to keep him available. Uh, which I think, if you asked him, he didn't fully agree on my philosophy of not, him not training every day and playing every minute because I needed to get him through the whole season. But a real talent, uh, a really good. Uh, I mean, I didn't. I always knew he was a good bloke because I knew someone, a mutual friend, who'd worked with him at Ipswich. So he'd always spoke really highly of him, and I had tried to sign him before. Um, obviously, I got rejected, or this would be a different story. Um, and uh, I was just amazed at what sort of rounded bloke he was, and how good he is with all the other players. I mean, they obviously hero worship him a little bit too much. Uh, no one should get that much praise, but the lads are buzzing for him. And like you know, when he scores, the lads are, you know couldn't be happier for him. So, as a talent, the way he lives his life, the way he wants to be the best version, the way he tries to help the younger lads, um, is is something to behold. So yeah, we're we're blessed to have him. Saturday, Burton Albion. Um, some Derby supporters won't consider it a rivalry. Some will, and and I know that everyone of a Burton persuasion will. When it comes to these sort of games, you have to match emotional energy that, that they're going to bring? Yeah, I, I think, um, I mean, this is probably a poo-poo answer that no one want to hear, but as from a player's point of view, it makes zero difference. And my job is to make sure the players are in the right place. So from their point of view, no difference. For people who phone radio stations or go on Twitter or speak to each other beforehand or sing to each other, it, it, it makes difference for certain people. Like you say, half the fan base might, might not see it. Half of their fan base might not see it. I don't. I, don't, I haven't studied uh, the uh, all the derbies in the country, and I know everything really well. I just, from a player's point of view, it makes no difference. I don't think the thing that does make a difference for the opposition is if they bring a big following and they start the game well, well, and the, they feel empowered by it. That's the difference. But it would make no difference if that was Fleetwood's fans there, Shrewsbury's fans there, whoever. So from that point of view, it, you know, it doesn't make any difference. So when we, if we play, well, we will play. If we play Sheffield Wednesday last game of the season, they need to win to get in the automatics and we need to win to get into the playoffs. If that was a local rivalry or not, the game would still be an absolute firecracker. So, yeah, I, I don't see too much into that. I appreciate we have got another rival that play in red. I've sort of sussed that. I'm pretty sharp at picking things up. So well done to me. 
Um, and I understand the intensity of that game, but I, I think this game will be intense because um, Burton have been in really good form since the turn of the year. I think you know their points, they've had loads of changes to players. Uh, which has had a real positive effect. Obviously, they uh, lost their striker, but I think they've done really well. So it will be a really tough game, as they all are. And I just think because it's local, it might add a little bit, but I don't think that will have an effect so much on our players. There is the Derby boss, Paul Warren. Everyone in action in League One today. The biggest game is at London Road, where fifth place Peterborough host second place Ipswich. Leaders Plymouth are at home, so a Bolton and Sheffield Wednesday. Wickham have to win, really, to stay in the playoff hunt there at home to Lincoln. And here at Pride Park Stadium, it's Derby County against Burton Albion, just the sixth ever competitive meeting between the sides. Overseas viewers can watch the action on Rams TV. Get your game pass now at dcfc.co.uk. Or we'll be back here with reaction after the game. Goodbye.